South Africa and Namibia are two countries that feel like close neighbors. On a bicycle, however, it's a whole different story. Rain Steven told me some oaks from Europe are coming over to cycle from Plate to Namibia. I thought they were nuts. As if this isn't far enough, they carry all their stuff on their bike and they ride the back roads. I'm Carl Chris, but everyone calls me CC. Let me take you on a wild adventure. After the 2019 Silk Road Mountain Race, I kind of had a bit of a hard time because I really started to realize that it would be hard to, to top this off. Like, what do I want to do? So eventually I stumbled across something that was called the Rhino Run. I partially grew up in South Africa and I was always keen to combine this passion of cycling that came to me later with going back home because South Africa partially feels like uh, home for me. And uh, the Rhino Run seemed to bring those two things together. Obviously COVID happened and the, and the inaugural year was postponed. As my friend Bas from the Netherlands said like, hey, you want to fly down anyways and do the route? I was like, My name is Ray, I am from South Africa. Yeah, I'm a freelance photographer and I like to, to ride my bike. My name is Bas, I live close to Amsterdam and I own a bike shop in Amsterdam. I really love to ride my bike for extremely long distances. My name is Max, I live in Salzburg, Austria. I'm an ultra cyclist since a few years now. started off from Plate with the idea of, of racing hard and riding as far as we could to kind of simulate this, an ultra race. That ultra race thing is insane. The Rhino Run route is 2,800 kilometers and 27,000 meters of climbing. The race was supposed to happen in 2020 and 2021 but the pandemic made it impossible. With tickets already booked, Bas and Max decided to come down anyway. They desperately wanted to ride it. That's it. Here we go. Lots of climbing to do today. First of the seven passes. These oaks moved fast. We struggled to get out of the car fast enough before they came flying past. Man, they didn't even stop until late at night. How long could they keep this up? Started in place yesterday. Um, slept nice the last night, then over tonight, and then to front back stop, and then just kind of going. Climbs are good. The terrain is rolling, and uh, the climbs are punchy, but like. Like the gravel is like. So after George, it's the monster pass, and then it's pretty much rolling. We can do some decent speed in the canoe. We travel to plate a lot, but I've never used any of the back roads. But even with our 4x4 bucky, I wasn't sure if we could make it. For Ray, Bus, and Max, it was just another day at the office. It's alright. Crazy hard rain, so it's kind of okay. Would have been better if it was dry though. Don't make me a liar, feet to the fire, begging me for an answer. I don't know what the future holds, but it's gonna be alright. Alright, it's gonna be Demeanor. I don't know how long this line will hold. Well, 
best ice cream. Beauty in every corner of this place, darkness on the edges of my face. I pray to God every single day that it's gonna be Nice. Feeling good? Yeah. Super nice tailwind. It's a yeah. very nice feeling being the Karoo. That's what we're here for. The guys were smashing it. We reached the Karoo in no time. What the Outback is to Australians, that's the Karoo for us. It's dry, wide open, simply amazing. It says it can go up to like 30 kilometers an hour or something. The thing is that the bigger the brewery, the more eyes on you. So yeah, yeah. very small, so we managed to survive. Uh, my name's Rob Hofmeyer. Uh, we started Thorny Creek Brewery three years ago. We're about 15 k's southeast of Otsun. Yeah. I started home brewing about five years ago and sort of fell in love with it. And the farmers from around here also uh, discovered the beer and they encouraged me to upscale so my favorite part about this brewery is the people who come here um, fortunately beer puts smiles on people's faces they get happier <laughs> the more they have and um, no, it's great to be able to do that finally the base dropped a bit I wasn't surprised when the guy stopped at Thorny Creek Brewery in the middle of nowhere the ice cold beer was a much needed refreshment. We obviously came here to ride the route of a race and what we normally do is racing. So we go with lightly packed bikes. We don't sleep so much and we don't stop for good food or beers or whatever along the way. So it took like a few days to really settle into the mindset of like yes we don't really need to go through the night we don't need to push ourselves to the limits heard you pass south of baltimore Wondering if you watch the ships roll in Will you stay up till the dawn's early light Do you ever wonder how I've been Whoa, whoa, go back. This is a Kubeka bike. Kubeka donates bikes for people who otherwise would not be able to get to work, school or the local shop. You can find them everywhere in Africa. meters of elevation which really isn't that impressive in numbers but and then the headwind just broke me man <laughs> you wanted to avoid the rocks but the wind just blew you right straight into a line that you didn't want to take <laughs> some of these back roads are completely unexpected following these guys makes me realize how much of my own country I still have to explore so far so good, three days down, um, we're about, I think we're almost at the 400k mark, maybe just over 400, um, yeah, feeling fresh, tomorrow got another 160k day, hopefully, we'll see how the bodies hold up. Yeah, that was a 
trip for a hard day. Yeah. Actually, I have to say I'm a bit tired. <laughs> yeah, I was tired yesterday already. I don't really feel like pushing anymore, to be honest. So, the brewery yesterday was a welcome, good break. Yeah, just to slow down a bit and yeah, mix with the locals. And I was quite amazed actually at the hospitality. Like they were closed, but but he was so welcoming and still opened up his place. Yeah, opened up for us and gave us beer and yeah, super cool. And this yeah. camp spot also is like super nice. It's better than sleeping in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. I wonder like if we should like turn it down a bit just lower the pace mm -hmm. do less kilometers but just mm. enjoy the whole experience a bit more yeah it's not <laughs> like we're racing yeah so when I mean, you guys traveled far to get here so we might as well just soak in the yeah we're taking it like in the evenings in the mornings taking it pretty easy but then once we get riding we're just pretty much on race pace really yeah, yeah. so we roll out tomorrow and we just see where the wind takes us okay that's perfect let's just do that I have never seen the Karoo as green as this. Spring and some unusual rains showed us rare colors and flowers in what is usually a dry and brown landscape. The Karoo seems endless with straight roads leading into nothing. The guys couldn't get enough. So instead of a tar pass, they took a dusty detour to Barrydale and then over to Doe's Pass. Can we take a slight detour and go by Barrydale to those to those parts? What do you guys think? Yeah. If you say it's better we trust the locals. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Are you still? Oh, and those great buyers, scooters, water feeds rails where the Yopi Pat run. Yeah, it's it's very peaceful if I were to say. Besides being peaceful, it's very quiet and to a great extent the weather is very unpredictable. Today is very hot, tomorrow is very cold, but it's very peaceful. Yeah. You got your mama's sunshine, you got your daddy's rain. You're like a piece of heaven in a hurricane. And it's bubbling over. Like you got your mama son. That's insane. You got your daddy's ring. It's still hard for me to understand how quickly the landscape changed. We started out at the ocean, then went through the green forests and arrived in the semi-desert landscape of the Karoo. And now we're back into lush green farmlands. The rivers are wide and filled with clear waters. Suddenly, I realize how blessed we are to call South Africa our home. It's bubbling over like sweet champagne. You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. You act just like your father. Yeah, you laugh at your own jokes. Takunda Jackson. I'm involved in the uh, trial building and maintenance. Uh, trying to uh, build something that someone will appreciate. It gives me joy every uh, morning just waking up to do that kind of work. Uh, there's a great uh, mountain bike club. They contribute to build uh, better uh, cycling trails and they also contribute to the community. They encourage the young people to do mountain biking. We took a lot of stops that day. It was just too damn hot. We probably shouldn't have told Max and Bus that a bunch of crocodiles escaped from a nearby crocodile farm. 
It wasn't even at this river, but they still waited a long time before they got into the water. Silly Europeans. Is it hot today? Yeah, happy you got to swim in. Dip my cap in the water so it's nice and dripping on my head. Just the water evaporating cools the brain. How's it? I'm Boyd Roberts from 40 Motion in Bloberg. Um, known Ray for a little while and we've ridden a bit of gravel together and I've come out for the day having a little bit of gravel, a little bit of fun and we'll see how we get on. Hopefully some beers later on though, definitely. artwork for the for the living you know so this is uh, my favorite of my paintings I took here that one is me this is me that is Uru dancer down there is me yeah and this one we call congregation this is a congregation yeah this means uh, people they have to work together also I got my son Pew is busy now at home I left him today he's busy to finish some couple of artwork as well so sometimes if I'm not here it's him who stand here making business so we're at the base of Beans Kloof Pass. Well, Ray said it was one of the most beautiful passes that we're going to ride, and there's construction on it. We can't do it. Heavy so we can't pass. Heavy. So we're going to ride down, back down to a place um, called Wellington, and come up with um, Plan B. Ray, that's the way it is. So what's the plan? Okay, so we have a couple of options. So to ride the long way around, by another 80 to 100 k's onto the day. Um, but it's a horrible road, you say. Yeah, the road is not great. It's, there's not much of a shoulder, and it's very, very busy with trucks and, and farm vehicles and stuff. I'd suggest we don't take that road. So, so now, obviously, because we can't get over the pass, I thought of maybe a nice opportunity for us to go into the Tankwa. Now we can maybe go into the start of the Tankwa and just ride through the Tankwa a little bit and then link back to, to the Cedarburg. And then, yeah, tomorrow we finish with an epic like 120 k's. Yeah. Have more beautiful sections, we're not in the race, so we can, you know, we can just make this about the experience instead of saying, okay, we still push through the. Yeah, dangerous. And I want to see, I want to see the Tonkwa. So if you have a yeah. chance now to see the Tonkwa, then yeah, yeah. I mean, just you, you came all this way. If you can't not see the Tonkwa, it's just. Yeah, we were pretty bleak that we couldn't obviously ride the route that we wanted to ride but as far as uh, plan B's go this is pretty epic welcome to the Tankwa <laughs> I'm pretty sure Bain's Glove Pass would have been beautiful, but the unexpected detour made for the best night of camping of our lives. Now we're here in the middle of the desert in the pool. <laughs> Yeah. 
2050, this could be a, an ocean mapping up here. You could come and touch suntan by the beach. The Karoo makes you feel like you're on another planet. However, the Tankwa is very special. Completely empty, almost like a desert. Just small bushes and if you look closely, some creatures enduring the harsh sun. When I find my love, I'll take it by the hand and ask it why. Why it took so long to make me understand and shed a light. When I find my love, I'll know the reason. Stop. And now I tell you why this film is called buy a donkey. <laughs> nah, just kidding. This is just a random donkey that we ran into on the top of Katsbaki's Pass. But it was cute and we fed him some of our snacks. On our way to the Cedarburg, it was incredibly hot again. Inevitably, the Europeans finally lost their fear of water. For this one, they didn't even ask if they were crocs. This was the last day on the bike, and we had one last brutal climb. Rough gravel went from the valley to the top, almost in a straight line, all under the scorching afternoon sun. Come back to get more of this. Really a sad moment. It's insane. The landscape changes every few kilometers. And it's so beautiful from green places oceans, rocky mountains, deserts, oasis is in the middle of nowhere, and very friendly people actually. The expression on their faces, the satisfaction of arriving at the end. It all came together and made a big impression on me. I might just start riding bikes too. Oh yeah, I did. I had to do some pushing. Nice. But done. Yeah. Done and done. Yeah, I, I realize that's a lot of the reason why I like riding is to is to share it with with friends and to share it with new people. And when you have two guys that have never been to the place before. You know, and you're rolling through with them and they like, you know, looking at this place like awestruck and thinking it's so amazing. You kind of 
you start looking at old old views you know again with fresh eyes and, and it kind of rejuvenates you I've really fallen in love with this country and I really want to come back of course I want to race the race but I can definitely see myself like visiting this country more often for the beauty for the change of landscapes uh, I feel so privileged to be seeing South Africa from my bike now um, I love how you can travel through a landscape with your bike and all of that was compressed into a very intense uh, experience here. Uh, people who are going to ride the Rhino Run as a race are going to really enjoy themselves and have a hard time. I must tell you guys about the ghost of the Cedarberg. <laughs> On the final night at the campfire, Max was asking me to teach him more phrases in Afrikaans. Hello, goodbye, <laughs> the usual stuff. I also taught him how to say thank you very much. Bye a donkey. That's how you say it. Bye a donkey. Before Max and Bus traveled back home, we decided to make one more stop in one of the largest townships of South Africa to visit Culture Cycles. My name is Cindy Lemavundla. I'm one of the co-founders of Culture Cycles. I uh, founded this company with my co-pilot, Juma Mkwela. Uh, we founded the company in 2018. Um, and the whole idea behind it was to get more people on bicycles. And, but it's been uh, such an amazing one for us to see how cycling has developed in Kailicha and uh, seeing the pool of people now that are cycling from just coming to the store or going to one of our coffee shops at Kailicha Mall. So it's safe to say that in the last four years that we've been operating, we have seen such an amazing change when it comes to cycling in the township. I mean, I would like firstly to say thank you to the guys from Triple uh, B for coming through to look at our store and seeing the need. And uh, this is uh, like our heart and soul of our business. This is where most bicycles in Kailicha come to get fixed. And we have two mechanics that are working here with us. So instead of sharing tools now, each person will actually have their own set of tools. Where we want to see ourselves in the next seven years, basically, and that is to actually have every township to have a bicycle shop or a workshop. On the 1st of February, we're going to be training our first three mechanics. When they've been trained as mechanics, they will go through a uh, entrepreneurship uh, course where they will train about how to run a successful business, but particularly how to run a successful workshop. And then from there, we'll then open up their own uh, culture cycles workshop stores in different areas. But uh, the whole mission is that we can get the whole Southern African region to have these type of workshops. This is simply a container that we converted into a workshop and we can be able to transport it wherever in the country. So that is our, um, our plan for the next seven years, is to scale and grow and open more job opportunities within the cycling industry.